Hello and welcome to another episode of my Wild Knitting Podcast. Today I have plenty spring-inspired projects to share with you. Several finish objects and some work-in-progress projects, plans. Let's just begin. Welcome back. If you're a returning viewer, thank you for being here again. And if you're new here, welcome. I hope you'll enjoy this content. I love to share a lot about my favorite craft, which is knitting and this podcast. But I also like to share our life here in the mountains in the center of Italy as we renovate our home and we live off grid it's a, a long <laughs> project and we recently moved here and we love it so today i tried to sit in my greenhouse but it's like overcast but the the light in the greenhouse was too like blinding me so i couldn't really couldn't really like look at the camera and share <laughs> things properly so I decided to um, re-record um, the this episode here and um, yeah let's just dive into the episode I uh, have three finished objects today one of which you might have spotted <laughs> so um, I finally finished the Choose Your Own Garden sweater. I've test knitted this beautiful sweater. I'm wearing it with, with a long kind of dress and I decided to knit it short sleeved. Um, I still, I'm still unsure. I love the short sleeve version. I think I'll wear it a lot, but I might, Re-knit the sleeves and knit them uh, basically longer uh, because I have the yarn. But we'll see how much use I'll make out of the t-shirt version and see if I use it a lot then maybe I just keep it this way. So I'm not sure I mentioned it but this is the Choose Your Own Garden sweater by Sarah Kelly or Grey Owl Knits I think is her Instagram handle and uh, she's a an absolutely generous and genius designer she makes intricate and like masterpiece like patterns uh, they might not be everyone's cup of tea but I think that once in your lifetime you can try knit um, to knit one of her patterns and this one was inspired by the garden and it was called choose your own garden because it gives you the option to actually play with so many different charts and that's why i said that she's a generous designer because she comes up with so many different charts and she gives them as you purchase the pattern and the patterns are her patterns are quite affordable i would say for the amount of um you know elements that um they come with so this sweater i don't know has probably like something like 20 i'm not sure but you know i'm not sure the exact number but 20 or something uh, different charts. The way this is constructed, you knit it top down. So you start with the yoke and her kind of sample, it was a full color work sweater. So on the sleeves, on the body, full color work. And many, um, many of the test knitters, which by the way, were amazing. Like each project, um, we had the little uh, test knitter group each project was just a masterpiece and I'm not exaggerating so I chose the color work only on the yoke and I did a little also color work on um, close to the bottom hem 
just because I think it would have like it's more like wearable for me for my own style and it's really interesting because wherever size you choose um, you knit like a fixed color work um, for the yoke up to this design so this section is um, equal for all sizes and um, because that has all of the increases I guess um, for the for the yoke and then from that uh, part downwards you can choose your own garden your own elements and so she provides different charts with different the length also for example um, this line of little yellow flowers that you can see here was like two centimeters or 175 centimeters um, high so and then for example the watering cans was seven or something centimeters knowing the amount of inches or centimeters that each color work section has you can kind of play and choose your own color work section and, and, and design and it was so fun and it was a lot easier than I thought I kind of there is an airplane in the distance um, I kind of decided to test knit this on a whim I was like it's so interesting I want to try it but I was a little bit scared that it would be quite difficult but it wasn't actually and I guess it was also because I took all my the time that I wanted this test knit deadline so it started I think in February and the deadline was April 12 I think and so I took all all my time now is we're April 11 so <laughs> yeah tomorrow is the deadline so I absolutely love it and I chose a very gorgeous yarn I still have uh, enough so I kept my 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 project and the yarn in this beautiful bag by the knitting swan and she designs and makes um, is a one-woman business she designs and makes um, all the knitting bags and accessories herself she also designs the beautiful you know little details and I think this is probably one of the if not the best um, bag I own for knitting projects and she was kind enough to um, give us a discount so you, if you write we grow wild at the checkout you get 10% off so for this sweater I used as the main color yarn I used the Lama Silk by Yarbo very beautiful and very very drapey so I I blocked this um, this garment and it grew probably like four centimeters something like that which is completely fine for me it's still like a really nice length but I'm really happy with the result even if it's stretched a little bit in the length it's super drapey and super soft and and because it has also the silk content 30% mulberry silk and 70% baby llama is also very like sturdy um, but it's super soft sturdy but super soft yeah and I am really curious to see how warm it will be um, here it gets quite warm we had a um, few days with 20 plus degrees celsius and full sun and I didn't I didn't wear it because I was still kind of blocking it and finishing it um, but I'm curious to see how he will how he will wear in the warm or summer warm weather we'll see uh, but I'm I'm hoping I can wear it almost all year round, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. 
so that was the first th that was the main color and then for the um, other colors I chose a nettle and uh, organic wool yarn by onion I think it was called onion organic wool plus nettles and it was it's beautiful it's beautiful the colors are very beautiful the yellow is the only one that was like a, a sock yarn that I had but yeah very pleased with this one there are little mistakes and imperfection but I'm I'm super pleased with this one and I yeah okay I have two beverages here one is a tea and another one is a chicory and coffee blend <laughs> I need both when it, that not that's not really a tea it's like a hops hemp and rose hip kind of infusion really really delicious okay let's go on with two more finished um, objects I'm wearing a head scarf is the romanticist bandana I test knitted this one last year and it's a really nice super simple super beginner friendly super cute uh, headscarf and I decided to make another one I shared it in one of my recent videos and now it's finished and I really like it this is the best um, this one was made with a cotton 100% cotton uh, yarn which I like but this is better so this one I've knitted it uh, with a stash yarn as part of a knit along that I'm co-hosting with Ali the adventures in stash knit along uh, if you want to check it out on Instagram if you want to participate it's, it's a year or year long knit along where you just um, also it's kind of like a make along you can also crochet and sew and all crafts are welcomed as long as you use something that you have in your stash and it's just to encourage ourselves to use what we have so I've knitted this one with a yarn that Ali gifted me two years ago a Leocell yarn and is super soft and drapey in this kind of aubergine color or plum color and I really like it I've been wearing it um, around my neck but mostly on my head especially when I have dirty hair like today I'm wearing this scarf because I have dirty hair and I put on some rosemary infused oil to kind of strengthen my hair <laughs> and then I have to go to the river and wash it so that was another little finish object that takes probably like a day or two it's a super quick palette cleanser project second uh, third sorry finished object is this super nice and simple camisole um, it's a ripple bralette modified as you can see it has a different back and it's longer I four or something years ago I purchased this pattern that I'm almost sick to mention because I mention it literally all the time and it's, it's not like I want I want to kind of clear out <laughs> the situation and I want to say that this is not the most amazing and the most beautiful pattern in the world it's it's a nice little staple and I kind of memorize it so and I wear it a lot as an undergarment as a you know camisole in the in the summer and so I made another one and it's cute it's not like it, yeah it's nothing special <laughs> <laughs> but um, but it's nice and um, there are two versions uh, two patterns you can buy one is the DK version and one is the ah, make is coming there are two versions that you can buy one is the DK version and one is the you know normal ripple bralette fingering weight version and long ago I purchased the normal fingering weight version 
but I always like to knit it <laughs> with the DK weight yarn and so I use I follow I think the second to the smallest or the smallest size and I go up with needle sizes and yarn so it's it fits perfectly and this is my most worn I want I, I brought it because I wanted to show you uh, my most worn garment I made <laughs> and it, it's it's still standing it's still standing i made this in a in the raw linen yarn by borgo de pazzi um i can't find this yarn anymore they don't sell it and i don't know i complained a little bit in an episode because it was peeling a little bit but it's actually super sturdy because i've been wearing this all the time almost too much and it's still it's still looking fine right so I decided to make more I want to make another one in another color as well I have I think four ripple bralette but this is definitely my favorite I guess it's because of the sturdiness of the yarn it's kind of a DK way very sturdy mercerized linen um, yarn and yeah this one was knitted in a cotton plus linen yarn by Novita Yarns the linen collection or linen love collection and I have another skein left so we'll see maybe I'll do a stripey ripple bralette or something else very happy with this. I've already used it a couple of days in the garden. Um, but yeah, what I'm noticing also in the other one is the unevenness. I guess it's the purling um, that makes it that uneven. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it's not, you know, the most pretty one, but we like it, we like it. Okay, let's move on. Those are my finished objects. So I finished this one. Finally, I finished the headscarf and the ripple bralette. It's more like a camisole than a bralette, but yes. Then, I haven't shared this in a proper podcast episode. I decided this is another beautiful bag by the Knitting Swan. I decided to participate, even though I'm, I don't have so much time, but this is going to be very relaxing um, knit. I decided to participate to another test knit by Anna Anderson or Andy Knits. And it's interesting because last year I participated to her test knit of the uh, Dahlia skirt, a skirt pattern, and I actually really love um, that design and that skirt, it fits beautifully. I have had so many people complimenting me for, for that uh, skirt. So the Dahlia skirt is a just a super beautiful, simple skirt knitted with a DK weight yarn but it has a lot of yarn overs so it can be a little bit see-through um, not too much but I think for those who don't want like see-through garments this skirt will be perfect so this is a super simple broken rib skirt again knitted with a DK weight yarn and I think the recommended needles are four millimeters. I'm using 3.5, I think. Yes, um, that's my gauge. And there's this absolutely beautiful and super functional waistband that you basically, um, yeah, you basically insert. She gives you like the details to, to insert a 
an elastic band inside it so it can hug your body and stay where it needs to stay. And um, the nice thing about this skirt is that it has also increases on the side. So if you have a beautiful and curvy body, you can do uh, as many increases as you want. The designer explains how to, to do it and uh, you can shape literally the, um, the skirt on your body. Um, but you can also skip that. All bodies are being honored. On the, with this pattern and uh, I like it I really like it it's super simple uh, broken rib is basically one you knit one and purl one for one round and then you knit all stitches another round and then you repeat these two rounds basically so super simple um, I like it I'm knitting it with a stash yarn um, this yarn was gifted to me by Valerie a wonderful woman and patron it's a wonderful yarn it's a 100% silk yarn and I don't have the label because during my move I think I lost the little business car that came with the skeins that she gave me um, so I don't know and Valerie if you're watching this maybe you can write it down please and I'll uh, pin your comment in case uh, anyone is interested so beautiful 100% silk yarn and it's the, in this kind of chocolate soily brown I really like it I think it would be beautiful to have it um, to wear in the garden or we'll see no. Zitta. Okay, next project. Ta da! I finished the body on this cardigan. Finally! I'm basically done with one sleeve. I'm knitting the ribbing. Just started knitting the, the ribbing. So I started this cardigan last year in June. Can you please calm down? Hmm? And. Um, my dog here, she's a little bit in distress. Um, so I started this cardigan in in June last year, and I didn't, I didn't knit on it. I kind of hibernate it because I didn't have enough yarn. I bought the main color yarn, this beautiful green, um, by Snail Yarns. And it's a wonderful indie dyer. Check check her um, her website out. Uh, she's based in Italy, and she makes wonderful wonderful colorways and in wonderful bases. And I bought three skeins of this yarn, two of which were in this color. Another one was like a terracotta red, and I used it in another project. And um, two skeins were not enough to knit a full cardigan so I was like I'm not sure I want to buy another skein because it's quite expensive for my own budget not that the yarn is expensive at all but for my own budget it was a bit too expensive and plus the shipping so I would have spent probably like around 30 euros only for one skein and so I was kind of postponing uh, <laughs> the purchase of, of that yarn until a few weeks ago I decided to gift myself some yarns by Rosarios Quattros which is a Portuguese brand I've knitted um, with their yarns in the past when I was living in Portugal this is the, the label and I bought a few skeins of two skeins of this which is a 50% linen and 50% wool yarn it's wonderful this is I, sometimes I say oh that's my favorite yarn but this is one of my favorite yarns it's just amazing I want to knit a full sweater I want to knit many more projects with this yarn uh, this is the color 07 which is kind of like this olive green this is the color of the leaves of the olive tree 
for me. It has a little bit of silver in it because probably the, the linen. Um, but I love that it has 50-50, you know, 50% 50 of linen content, whereas this one probably has the main color that I used um, for, for this um, cardigan. I think it has a little bit less, maybe 30% of linen, something like that, and 70 wool, but yeah. So when I opened the package, I bought a little bit, I bought other yarns with it as well, but when I opened the package, I was like, maybe this will match the green of my cardigan. <laughs> and it doesn't, uh, in the sense that it's not the same green, as you can see, it's a, it's a darker green, but I love it. I love it, it looks still very beautiful to me, and the gauge is slightly different, slightly different. So this is a fingering weight yarn. It's, or probably DK, no, it's sport. It's 100 grams and 310 meters. Whereas this one is 100 grams and 400 and something meters. So it's thinner. Um, but I changed needle size and it doesn't, you know, you don't really see such a difference. So I'm, I'm really loving <laughs> that I, you know, got around to use this yarn, which cost like less than 10 euros, maybe like seven or five euros. I don't remember. Um, and it, I bought two skeins and... I'm almost done with one sleeve and I have still quite a lot of yardage left. Um, yeah, sometimes you have to find cheaper solutions and that might take, take time. I would say that both yarns are gorgeous. For my budget, um, the Alvor yarn is better, but um, check out also snail yarns. Um, so I love this one. I'm gonna I'm gonna knit many projects with this. I think it's the perfect it's the perfect fiber combination. So I'll be slowly knitting on this. And that's it when it comes to the projects that I've been working on. So I have two, you know, active whips, the skirt and this cardigan. But I'm about to start another project and I'm feeling a little bit like I'm excited but at the same time I want to also move on with summer summer knits and this is not a summer knit but I'll cast it on and then we'll see how you know maybe I'll finish it in in autumn this is a yarn that was sponsored uh, for a knit along so a few months ago I got contacted by this beautiful yarn store Ivi Knit or Iwi Knit I don't know how to pronounce it and it's based in Toronto Canada so exciting and they asked me if I wanted to participate to a knit along the Azucena pullover knit along and I checked the design I fell in love so Claudia Quintanilla, I think is the designer name. I'm not sure I pronounce her surname correctly. Um, designed this beautiful Azucena pullover and it, it's a beautiful color work pullover knitted um, with a fingering weight and a fluff, like a silk mohair um, held together. For the main color, I chose this combo. So this is the year of the green for me. Um, I said it in the, at the beginning of the year, in January. I said this year I'm just wanting to knit all garments in green <laughs> because it's just I'm just so very much attracted to this color. And so I picked this beautiful yarn. I never knitted with Knitting for Olive Merino. So it's going to be my first time. 
I'm not a huge fan of merino yarns. I think they are a little bit overrated, unpopular opinion. I think it's normal that merino is such an established and famous type of wool um, because it's very soft, uh, it's very nice to work with, but it's also, it appeals a lot in my opinion. I don't know this specific one, we'll see, but I think that holding it together with a fluff, a silk mohair, uh, it will fix that problem. So I chose the color pea shoots <laughs> on both and I'm just so excited. I'm going to cast it on after I um, finish recording. So that was the this is the main color and the contrast color oh, it's this beautiful artichoke purple they called it look at this this is not really my color um i like more like warmer tones but it's too fun and i think i don't care if it's not my color i'm still gonna love it and so there's gonna be some details in this color. I just have um, one um, skein in each yarn. And then uh, uh, the main basically color is going to be the green. So they're just gonna be little details in purple and look at this combo. How fun, how fun. So love it. This is the color artichoke purple, both of them. So yeah very excited to cast on this pullover so the knit along started the 8th of march but i received the yarns yesterday so i'm a little bit uh late but i'll cast it on very soon and uh, yeah i think that's it for today i'm running out of battery mita has been chewing on a bone for probably half of the video so if you heard some sound i really apologize but life in the countryside saturday the 13th i think um of april i'm going to go live i'll try to go live every saturday at 9 a.m c-e-s-t um so kind of rome time italian time and yeah i like to have a knit and chat in the morning here and there with you all and it has been so fun to go live so if you want to you know participate um i'll um uh, i'll be hanging out for an half an hour or so so yes and if you like this content please make sure you subscribe and you like or comment and if you want to support me even further we have a patreon account um, there isn't much behind that paywall sometimes i share some extra videos uh, we have a wonderful whatsapp group where we are kind of just hanging out as friends we're sharing life updates and project updates it's a very safe and wonderful space for me i love it and yeah sometimes i share like life updates but there isn't like a super you know amount like a huge amount of content um hidden behind a paywall it's just a way to kind of support um me and our project and we recently also opened a gofoundme account or like page uh, if people want to donate something for our crazy off-grid home renovation project um, i'll leave the links in the description box you don't have to donate but uh, it's nice to ask for help and um yeah <laughs> have a little bit of support but you all have been supporting me so much so thank you so much for all of your wonderful comments and engagement and i i i'm just I'm constantly feeling so at home in this community and I, I just, yeah, I've, I'm very, very humbled and, and grateful for still being here and for having all of this support still. So thank you so much for today. 
I hope you enjoyed this little bit chaotic spring podcast episode and uh, I'll see you very soon. Thank you.